Gen Z, Gen Z. I've come to the conclusion about Gen Z, okay? I am 46 years old. I am a Generation X. I would have been the parents of a lot of Gen Zs, okay? Because because old or I'm sorry, young Generation Z, I'm ah, young Generation X and older millennials are the parents of Generation Z, okay? So, yeah, we all know that there's a huge, huge problem with Generation Z, right? And if you guys aren't sure what the problem is, all you gotta do is go on TikTok, okay? So, I personally don't even have TikTok on my phone anymore because it's just too much social media. I have too much social media. I'm trying to just focus on YouTube. I have my Instagram because I like to post photos. Um, I have my Facebook, but you know, my Facebook ain't. The only reason I use my Facebook is for, uh, for Facebook groups or for marketplace. That's it. And so what you'll see, the good thing about social media and the good thing about this, this, uh, sorry, I'm making some tea, some chamomile tea. It's an overcast day here in New York. I got to head to Pennsylvania here in an hour or so to pick up a load. So the good thing about social media and our, our acceptance of posting all your thoughts and feelings online is it really lets us get into the mind of these future generations going forward. Now that's not always a good thing, right? That's not always a good thing. You don't always want everybody to know what you're thinking all the time, right? But the good news is that helps us get into the mind of these wackos, these generation Z wackos, right? They're wackos. Um, and, and we're, we're partly to blame. Okay, the parents of Generation Z got lazy, okay? They got lazy. And they let their kids grow up on video games, on a tablet, on a phone, in their room. Now, a lot of Generation X parents or Generation Z parents, a lot of their parents were worried at the so-called changing climate of the United States. Uh, let me let me address that real quick. Everybody says we live in such a dangerous world. Oh, the world's not like it was back in the 80s. We can't let these kids go out and play like we used to. Uh, I beg to differ. Uh, I've lived in a few neighborhoods just in the last few years where kids played in the street kids rode their bike around the neighborhood okay so and, and these were not nice neighborhoods these were not upscale neighborhoods the, this was the ghetto the ghetto in las vegas and the ghetto in arizona all right and then now now i live uh, actually in colorado uh four or five years ago i lived in a fairly nice neighborhood and all the kids played in the street and you know they were going to each other's houses and now i live in a, in a fairly nice neighborhood in arizona and the kids i see kids doing the same thing i see them riding bikes riding scooters going to each other's houses so that excuse of we can't let them out of the house anymore uh that's why we let them grow up in their room on a tablet because it was safer that's a cop-out man that's a cop out. Uh, I don't believe it. I believe what the problem with society today is every time a kidnapping happens or some other assault on a child or a shooting in public, every time this stuff happens now, it's at our fingertips. We have it in our hand and it's hard to get away because we're hearing the news from all over the country. Well, the problem is how many times does that actually happen in your neighborhood where you live? It doesn't happen very often at all. But because we hear about everybody else's neighborhood now on social media, 
it seems like it's happening more than it really is. Okay, that's the first problem that we run into with raising Generation Z. Okay, so let me get back to the problem we have with Generation Z. A lot of them are not tough at all, they're very, very soft, they don't know how to deal with the public, they get they have extreme social anxiety. Okay, they're just overall weaker. They're physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially weaker than any other generation. Well, any other generation of the last 100 years, okay? I've come to the conclusion on why. And it's because we let these children lock themselves in their room and grow up on a screen. A TV screen, a laptop screen, a phone screen, a tablet screen. We let them grow up on a screen. And what we did to them is, yes, we gave them a lot of information. We actually gave them way too much information, way too much information. That's the, that's the first element in, in how we ruin these kids. We gave them way too much information, which creates anxiety and fear of the world and, you know, Things that, things that teenagers and children should not have been privy to. And I'm not talking about just violence and, and, and sexualized images. That's a huge problem too. But I'm talking about information about wars. Okay? I'm talking about information about financial crises, about recessions. You know, when I was 19 years old, I had no idea what a recession meant. But my parents made it, or, or even younger. Let's talk about when I was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I had no idea what a recession was at 16 years old. But nowadays, these kids understand what a recession is and they're hearing about it on a daily basis, on social media, on the news, from their friends, from everybody that thinks they know anything about anything, okay? That's the problem is these kids watch the news or they listen to other people speak on the internet and they all of a sudden think they understand anything about anything and they don't. You don't know anything about anything just by reading it on the internet. Now, could a 40 year old read something on the internet and get a vast knowledge from it and understand it? Yes, because they could differentiate that information from reality, okay? Just because so-and-so over here is losing their house doesn't mean I'm going to lose my house. Just because so-and-so's job won't pay him any more money doesn't mean I can't make any more money, right? But when you're 18 years old and you're listening to all this bad stuff happen in the world, you automatically think it's going to happen to you, right? You don't understand how to, you don't understand the nuance and the con the contextual, the, uh, I'm trying to, I'm just, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. An 18 year old, a 20 year old has no life experience. So they can't compare what's going on with somebody else to what's going on in their own life. And that creates a lot of fear, uncertainty and anxiety and they, they're scared, okay? So you got, you got all these Gen Z's that are emotionally and mentally scared. And then you have the physical aspect of being weak. These people are just physically weak. And that's because we let them grow up laying in their bed, sitting in a chair in front of a laptop computer playing video games. They didn't have to go outside. How many Gen Z's growing up right now sprained 10 ankles growing up? How many of them fell off a skateboard a hundred times in the street and skinned up their face, skinned up their elbows, skinned up their knees? How many broken legs do we have? How many broken ankles do we have, you know? How many times have they got hit playing football and had to get back up and finish the game, you know? How many of them are in boxing or martial arts or gymnastics? Not very many of them anymore, okay? How much exercise are they getting? They're not getting any exercise, okay? These kids nowadays never had to ride a bike home 
and at the end of the day on a Saturday they were so damn tired they couldn't even ride up a hill they had to push it up the hill shit I grew up in California where the hills were so bad the hills were so bad on a bicycle when I was a kid you couldn't even ride up the hills you had to run or or walk your bike up every single hill so you could then ride it down the next the other side of the hill okay that made us stronger the simple act of having to push a bicycle up five hills to get home at night that right there will make a kid stronger when they're 10 or 12 years old trying to do that 13 years old you know how many kids nowadays how many gen z's were forced to go into the backyard every weekend and rake leaves or chop wood or push a lawnmower right these kids are 20 years old and don't even know how to put gasoline in a lawnmower i'm talking about men and women okay we ruined this generation now i'm not saying all gen z kids are weak what i'm saying is if you take if you take gen x let, let's say 75. I'm just going to throw a number out there for argument's sake, but I could, because I grew up with these people, I can pretty much tell you these numbers are going to be fairly true. Gen Z, 80 to 85% of Gen Zs were strong and tough and would fight and knew how to, knew how to start a lawnmower or a mini bike. They didn't mind. They didn't mind taking a risk on that skateboard, on that bicycle, okay? Jumping that fence, climbing that wall. I would say 85%. And then you had 15% of people that were uh, that were different, okay? I'm not really gonna make fun of them, but well, you know what I mean. They're the nerds, okay? They were the nerds, the weaklings. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. We called them names, but I I actually was picked on a lot um, because people thought I was a nerd. People thought I was a weakling, but I was just different. I was just different. So my point is about 85% of Gen Xers were rugged, rough, and tumble and smart mainly street smart don't get me wrong i street smart but we were we were all that right now take gen z and i would say let's turn that around only 15 percent of gen z is that rough and tumble and rugged kid that 20 year old that 22 year old kid right now now don't get me wrong I have met a lot of Gen Z's that will still work their ass off, but you don't see a lot of those kids in the city anymore, in these big metro areas. You don't see them there. You see them out here in the country. You see them out in the sticks. You see them out on the edge of the cities, in the county, okay? They're still out there. I'm not, I'm not saying 100% of Gen Z's are useless, but I would say you know, if 80% of Gen X's were useful, I would say 80% of Gen Z's are useless. Now, does that mean you're always going to be useless if you're a Gen Z? No, no, of course not. But what I'm trying to say is you're 22 years old right now, 24 years old, Gen Z. You should already be 10 years ahead of where you're at. But you're not because my generation and the millennials raised you to be soft as fuck. But now I figured it out. I figured out why it's because you've never sprained an ankle. You've never broke your wrist. You never had to rake up a yard every single weekend for three months. You never had to cut grass when it was 110 degrees out. You know, you never have, you don't have to walk to school in the snow anymore. You know, nobody makes you walk to school anymore. Nobody, nobody makes you ride your bike to school anymore. You get a ride with a friend. 
You ride with their parents, you ride with your parents, an aunt, an uncle. Nobody wants to let you walk because they're terrified. Shit, my whole neighborhood walks to school right now. All those little boys and girls are walking to school. People are still walking to school. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people are. But the amount of kids that were left on their their own to grow up and to learn, quote unquote, learn the hard way, it's not as many kids as, as Gen X. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. You guys don't have to deal with rejection. You barely have to deal with rejection. I read this article. It said that Gen Zs are way less likely to use dating apps than any other generation. Gen Zs don't want to meet people. They don't want to go on dating apps. And one of the reasons they said is they don't want to they don't want to come across as cringe. They don't want to feel cringe. They don't want to feel awkward. And because of the fear of rejection. You're 24 years old and you're worried about the fear of rejection? First of all, who's going to know that who's going to know you got rejected? Who is going to know you got rejected on Tinder? The whole world's not going to know. Nobody's going to know unless you fucking tell them you got rejected, dummy. So why are you guys, why do you have the fear of rejection on Tinder or another dating app? Can you imagine back in the 80s when you had to go ask the girl to the dance in front of the whole cafeteria and everybody knew that you were going to do it because they were all gossiping about you? And when you went and asked that girl to the dance, she said no in front of the whole fucking cafeteria. Can you imagine dealing with that kind of rejection? Now that, that is rejection, my friend. You guys don't know what rejection is. You've barely ever been told no. You've barely ever been told no. And then you guys get to be 20, 22, 24 years old and you're trying to come out here and find a job. And, oh, I've, I've applied for... 200 jobs this week and I haven't got one call back. Oh my God. You're not going to get a call back dummy because you and everybody else in the city is applying for that job online. Why would you get a call back? Listen, if you want a job in this political climate, in this economic climate, don't apply for jobs online unless you absolutely have to. Now, if you absolutely have to, then you apply online and you follow it up with a telephone call to the human resources. All right? How am I a convicted felon? I did 12 years in prison. I got out and had a job in less than 72 hours. Now, this was, this was back in 2017, but don't, but listen, there are, there are convicted felons being released from prison today that are finding jobs in less than two days, three days. Now, Gen Z's, you guys are probably applying for jobs that everybody wants. Lazy jobs, right? Don't do that. If you really want a job, unfortunately, as stupid as this sounds, you need to go to the fast food joints. You need to go to Home Depot. You need to go to car lots and try to wash cars, all right? That's where you need to go until you have experience. If you're, if you're 20 years old and you haven't even had a job yet and you're trying to get your first job, hell no, people ain't going to give you the money you want to get. Hell no, they're not going to hire you first unless you bug them, right? If I got 100 applicants that filled out an application online and all of you guys have the same dumb associates of arts degree. I'm not going to even respond to people that have never had a job. I'm going to respond to the people that at least have six months of experience working somewhere, right? So yeah, that's another thing. You guys have never been rejected. You've almost never been told no up until you tried to go out and get a job. Now you're being told no about jobs and you're freaking out. You're all over TikTok talking about how terrible life is. Life is not terrible. Okay, it's just that you guys were raised on a tablet. You guys were raised on a computer screen. You've never dealt with physical altercations. You've never had to deal with face-to-face altercations or fear of rejection. 
you know that block button on social media is real real cool until you get out in the real world and all of a sudden you realize you got to deal with people face to face right i'm not trying to be a dick here but um you know if the gen z's want to listen to me if you guys want to try to get some advice from me that's cool but i'm going to tell you who i'm talking to right now I'm talking to my friends that have six, seven, eight-year-old kids right now as we speak. I'm talking to my friends that are raising their grandkids right now as we speak. If you don't want to continue this cycle of these kids growing up that we're that we are disillusioned with, because I, I hear all my friends, everybody in their 40s talking about Gen Z doesn't want to work, Gen Z is lazy, Gen Z is this, Gen Z is that. Well, it's our fault that Gen Z is like that. Now, I'm raising a, a girl right now. She's great, 13 and a half years old, and uh, she does a physical exercise almost every day of the week before she's allowed to get up. Oh. Should have put that on. Do not disturb. Okay, she exercises almost every day before she's allowed to get her tablet. She does household hold chores. She goes to the gym with me as much as I could take her to the gym because I'm, I'm an over-the-road trucker, so obviously, but I tr I'm going to try to take her to the gym at least once a week, right? Gets, hit some iron, hit the weights. We go to the lake as much as possible. We go to the river as much as possible. I take her hiking as much as possible. When I'm at the house working on the car, she's working on the car with me. If I got to do chores in the backyard, she's doing chores in the backyard with me. And I tell her all the time, she, she doesn't really ever give me any shit for asking her to get off her tablet for a while and come with me because she knows what I'm doing. Because since she was six years old, I've explained to her that if you want to make money in life, if you want to be smart in life, you got to be strong. If you want to be able to talk to people in life, if you want to chase your dreams in life, if you want to have fun in life. You have to be mentally, emotionally, and physically strong, okay? That's all. You just have to be strong. So I'm talking to people that have young children or at least have young children in their care. If you don't want to be complaining about those children in 15 years, like you're complaining about all the 20-year-olds now, we have to do something different. Everybody has to do, force these kids to get outside. Force these kids to go into the backyard. Force these kids to go to the park, to the skate park, to the roller rink. Get them off that tablet. I know it's hard. I know some of these kids are more addicted than others. Some of you guys really screwed up with these kids, allowing them to be on a, on a phone or a tablet since they were two years old, okay? And I feel for you guys. I've seen some of these kids in the grocery store losing their effing mind because the parents are saying, no, you can't have my phone right now. I'm using it to shop. And the kids just blow their whole lid off, right? I understand. But this is why Gen Zs are quote unquote so lazy and don't want to work. They're just weaker pe people, period. They're weaker in every way, and it's not their fault. We did this to them. Subscribe to the channel if this kind of stuff interests you. Hit that like button for me. Thank you.